Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Appropriate Culture, episode 12, where we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship. Enjoy. And we're live. All right. What is up? What's good, bro? First of all, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to... The new setup. Yeah, the new setup. The new setup. Cheers to living our dreams, yo. Cheers to that, man. Um, we are here in a new location. We're in Las Vegas. The heart of entertainment. So far, we've been here for two days, and it's been, may I say, refreshing, to say the least. Yeah, it's beautiful out here. Uh, it's been super warm. Uh, it's like 80 something, mm-hmm. maybe 90 degrees. 85, today. 90. Um, Sun. We uh, have a beautiful pool right behind us, uh, which is pretty dope. Um, yeah, it's funny. We both do Wim Hof. Uh, like t- we usually we do it like a cold shower and then some like fast breathing. But uh, it's nice having a pool, you know, even because even when it's hot in the desert, it's like the pool is still like reason you know it's like oh no that pool is cold as hell i mean so, i went in and I, I could barely i could barely stay in there and so yeah. the wind hoff on a daily to, start, to get the day started yeah, yeah i jumped in today um, and it was just like boom instant just like adrenaline rush like endorphins you know surging through and then it was even hard to do that you know fast breathing it's like i you know Sometimes when in the shower, I, like, do, like, 30, 33 breaths, and, like, uh, today I did, like, 12. <laughs> yeah. No, for real. And you'll notice as soon as you go underwater, that initial shock mm-hmm. is enough to just jolt you, and, and it just throws you off. And that's the whole, I mean, that's the whole point of trying to grab control mm-hmm. on something as simple as your breathing. Or, Yeah. That sets you in place to be able to get your whole day started. And what's funny is, is that practice, which we've, we've mentioned before, I think it was in the last uh, episode or the one before that one. Discipline, yeah. Um, goes hand in hand with what a lot of other, with a lot of other entrepreneurs I've studied who talk about different aspects of meditation, Mm -hmm. which coincide with different aspects of uh, breathing techniques. Mm, yeah, we're in. Um, and so I, I find it interesting how across the board, entrepreneurs that I've come across, not all, but a lot of them, especially in the what you'd call in the millennial age range, mm. tend to really value the same type of wellness ways of going about life when it comes down to meditation. When it comes down to exercising. Millennials? Um, well, the ones that I know. Where? Uh, not necessarily millennials. Uh, let's just say like our age. I mean. Yeah. I mean, I think generation, you might be. Generation, generation Z. Well, I guess. X. Yeah. Um, and I mean, what, what I'm trying to say is I've, I have noticed a trend specifically. Now, there are people who say they're doing whatever it is that they're doing related to business. And nobody's here to knock on it, but, you know, we all know that there's a lot of talk going on. There's few people who are actually really walking the walk. Yeah. I'm talking about a lot of the people that I actually know walking the walk. Yeah. I physically know by getting to know them over time that the aspect of meditation, meaning not even just on what you do specifically, but just having a clear mind Mm. going into business. Mm. That seems to be something that's um, kept at a high regard. At the same level of, do I want to have a successful business? Then I have to have a successful mindset. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's something I think a lot of people overlook. I mean, because it's not, it's not necessarily taught, like, standing in any type of standard. Um, so how do, you, how do you think that is acquired by an individual? Uh, I mean, it depends, I think. For the most part, like, there's an entrepreneurial spirit that, like, just people tend to have. Um, I mean, I think it's a good segue. I think both of I, both of us have had that. You know, it's like I've started my first business. I mean, actually, so 
I remember in second grade there was like a, a school like in my classroom they had like a store where it was like we had like fake money um and i thought that was super dope and so like we could do like do different tasks or like if we did well on tests we get like money and stuff and um and then i remember in fourth grade we had there was a nut like uh my teacher, Mr. Hain at Oak Heights Elementary, um, had this thing, this like store. It was like an, it's a, was like an entrepreneurial um, type of program in his four, in a, his fourth grade class where he called it Hain's World and had like, you know, fake money, Hain's bucks. And mm-hmm. so like, basically everyone could start their own business and everyone got like a certain amount of money and then we could, uh, trade money or like you know you could buy and sell things or like create a service like i i went in i part it was my first partnership i partnered with this guy randy cote who and he created a lottery and uh he was actually a really good business partner he was a better business partner me than i was then i was like i i don't know like i had some i had some other things that i like oh yeah i used to sell pens and stuff mm. it was funny so you had multiple businesses in second grade well in, this was fourth grade in oh. fourth grade my first actual like business where i was selling things like that i started on my own accord like didn't nobody you know encouraged me to start this i actually got in trouble for it a couple of times but um my dad sold pens um, that you know, like he was a flight attendant and got uh, he actually just retired but um, he sold pens that he bought from China like these super cool fa- fountain pens you get them for like a dollar like two dollars and then sell them for like ten bucks you know it's like a pen you'd buy here for like ten twenty bucks yeah um, and so you know I'd like I'd borrow some from him and then I'd sold I sold them to the kids at school from anywhere from like four to ten dollars. Damn. Um, and then making that profit. Yeah I, yeah, I think I made like 40 bucks or something like that. And Hell so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, what I really wanted to do was. <laughs> hey. Um, it's funny. Uh, so yeah, so I, we did that. And then I remember like, uh, I was paying more attention to the business than I was to school and like I you know was like not turning in my my work and stuff for a couple of my for like reading I think I got like a C plus and that was like basically meant that I was failing I like wasn't doing anything but anyway so I got in trouble and so I had to like stop selling stuff um but yeah so like fourth grade I was like all about it and actually come to think of it around the same time one of my all-time favorite games still that like I'll still play every now and then um, actually, it was Monopoly, yeah. But no, um, this game called Pizza Tycoon. It mm. was. Uh, it came out in like 1995. Is that like Roller Coaster Tycoon? Um, kind of similar, but this was basically you like you opened a pizza shop, you designed pizzas, you set the price, you bought ingredients, you hired staff, you like you know basically open different pizza shops. The goal was to get to a million dollars. Just slanging pizza slices so, all the yeah, way. Down. And then you know it taught you about marketing, taught you about say, uh, like supply and demand. This and was then, in fourth grade. You were playing this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's it, what I'm talking about. It came out in '95, I think I got it. Yeah, I got it in like '96. Um, and yeah, it's so funny. But that was like my favorite game. That actually taught me so much about business, and like you know, really inspired me. And like since then, I've like, I mean, in high school, I tried to start little businesses, like selling watches and stuff, or like selling uh, like um, Gatorade and like same thing in like college. I like, got in my dorm room. It's a little. Uh, um like snacks and stuff and um I actually found this like like everybody smoked blunts in college so like I, I found this like uh website that like sold blunts for hella cheap and so I'd like buy like big boxes of them and then just like you know So you're all about you you're all about the buying and reselling. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I mean that's like flipping. Like selling tobacco is like not, flipping. Something, not something I would ever um do now. I I mean, like, yo, that's for the people out there who think that you need to start some brand new idea or some brand new concept or your own personal original product, yeah. you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you can go down the route of finding things that are clearly being sold under price in one place and clearly wanted for a higher price somewhere else. Yeah. And all that does is a little bit of research, 
I mean, I've seen a lot of guys like Gary V showcase stuff like that. Uh, that type of mentality of going in there and going to like garage shops and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Going to like Ross or um, some of the yeah or Salvation state, Army. State sales, yeah, exactly. Like, um, and then flipping that over back on eBay yeah, or yeah. wherever the heck. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of dope. It's like if you're into collecting stuff and like kind of treasure hunting, like that's actually, I think, a great thing to do because it, one, it like helps people reuse stuff and like not have to buy everything new. But two, it's like it's fun. Like my, my dad loves collecting stuff. I'm like, I'm really, I feel like I'm going to encourage him to try to uh, start like a, an online hobby shop or something. Um, cause I feel like he, you know, he collects hell. It's still like dope stuff, like tripods or something. And then it like fix them like, mm-hmm. and then, uh, you know, but he like, he'd be cool if he could, you know, sell it to somebody or, you know, um, fix some other people's stuff. But, but yeah, I mean, he's also a photographer. I mean, he's, he's actually kind of, I feel like I got some of my entrepreneurial, sh- uh, spirit from him like he was the one selling pens like you know it, that was his side business while he was a, a flight attendant um and you're just picking up the slack you know what i'm saying yeah, just getting, getting those know. extra sales in there yeah you know and he's always like i mean he's a photographer and he's like he's like also like does works with some like artists um like uh sculptors and like painters and stuff and like helps set up uh like art shows and stuff but so um, he, so here's here's a question what what dictates because i i've kind of find out a lot of people uh, are constantly living on the fence meaning they have these great ideas they dream about this possible lifestyle they could have mm-hmm. uh, but they're constantly not 100 percent going for it yeah. um what do you think dictates that somebody should 100 percent just stop cutting the shit and just go for it and just go for it uh, I mean, I really think it it's like risk and um, like stability, like how, you know, like do you have kids, do you have like a mortgage, like really where are you at in your life? You know, if you are you straight, straight out of college, you got no obligations, you got nothing to lose, you know. Um, yeah. And it's also it's like, do you have resources and um, how much knowledge do you have? It really it really depends on what you're at, where you're at. But you know, at some point, I think everybody you know, should figure out how to go for it. And, um, you know, some people don't really deal with uncertainty that well and, like, get hell anxiety and just, like, would be better off working well, a job. Is, which but, is what I'm saying, yeah. Like, it but, seems so, like... So, yeah, it's a very individual thing, you know? And it's, like, I, I really have a lot of respect for someone who can come in and, like, help someone with an organization. Because there's really, it's, like, there's all types of personalities and it's like you know everybody can't be the head of the company like right you need people who are like reliable and like specialize in certain areas and you know it's like we could like it's like you and i could start two different companies or three different companies you know and with like eight other people in a different mix and like we could all have different roles um but you know it's like we're not all going to be the leader and so so yeah it's like um it's uh, like trade-offs and then you're also it's you go and work for other people to either do good and like help help them or you know do something good in the world or or to learn skills or you know preferably both like you know it's like i i I love volunteering with somebody or like helping somebody out with a project you know or or like helping you out with something can you know because i'm always learning and it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna benefit from it um in multiple ways that I, I don't even understand yet. And, you know, and it's just fun. It's like, that's what make life, makes life fun. I like, I'm here, I'm not here to just like do stuff by myself. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm here to interact and help other people. But see, and that's, I think a big part of entrepreneurship too. It's like when you're an entrepreneur, you generate, um, not just like work and money and jobs for people, but you generate like interest and passion. You get like, you start a movement, you get a ton of people inspired and they're like actually fulfilling their purpose because your organization exists, you know? And it's, uh, it's like there, it's really just like benefits, uh, the world in, in multiple ways. 
I agree. Um, but yeah, why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about your background in entrepreneurship? Because you, I like, I've heard multiple stories, but I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen a heard of like a chronological. Because like you, I know you've started mul- multiple businesses from an early age and had like lots of success too. So yeah, yeah, and you're still um, at it now, still going. So okay, uh, I would say. 16, 15, 15 going on 16 is when the bulb went off that starting a business or being going down an entrepreneur route was going to give me the um, financial payout that I wanted to have in life in order to have the freedom that I needed to have. So I actually already had that foresight early on. And I think what showed me that, weirdly enough, or not weirdly enough, obviously enough, was it like movies. Uh, movies painting the picture of like successful entrepreneurs. Um, I think we underestimate how powerful those images are, especially when you're a kid. Yeah, weird. I actually, I'll have, I have something to add on to that when you're, you know, yeah. you're done. Yeah, I mean, don't add, add it right now because. Well, oh, yeah. so just a little side note. Like, what's funny is I'm a very non-violent person. Like, I don't believe in like violence. I think um, I actually I I get it. I mean, I get like humans need to compete and like you just you just don't partake i just you know me personally like i would much you know rather just not fight it's like it's not that interesting to me but anyway so that being said i'm super nonviolent person some of my favorite movies and the movies i find the most inspirational to me personally that like inspired me to get up and like you know start an organization to like change the world are like you know, movies like Blow or like Scarface or, you yeah. know, series like Narcos. This is some gangster ass shit. You know, where it's like, like yeah. Narcos. I've watched, you know, I've watched both Nar- Narcos and Narcos yeah, Mexico yeah. multiple times, you know, because Pablo Escobar, he's like, you know, he, and, you know, Felix. Uh, well, it's a good segue because the first business I started is right along the side of those types of businesses, kind of. Well, nightlife. I mean, nightlife. That, no, no. Let, no, let me no, let me explain. Yeah, let me explain. Let me explain. You're not you're not selling cocaine. You're, let me explain. You're not doing let me explain. Shit. Let me but. explain to to a religious parent household. I'm basically going in that direction. Yeah, we're in. Is and, is and for the record, that's actually how it was framed to yeah. me by my parents. <laughs> that's hilarious. Let me add that you know. In, I'm inspired by that stuff, but like not not the cocaine and not the drugs and murdering part. More just the whole building your empire. I feel um, but I feel anyway, it's, go it's ahead. dope. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so you no, parents, yes, I was not intrigued. moving kilos across the borders. That was not what I was doing. But according so, to your parents, it, it's the same thing. It's the equivalent. Yeah, it's the equivalent. My, my parents, kind of, my mom, kind of like had that. Same yeah, thing. and so just as a little quick background, right before I'm about to tell you the business that which my parents basically thought I was selling my soul to the devil. Um, before, right before that, we're talking like six months, maybe a year before, so like right around 15. I started really trying to look for ways to make a lot of money fast because I had my first taste on uh, first taste on jobs and that sucked really bad. I was well aware that if this is how things are gonna go, this is just not not doable. I started going to like affiliate marketing, mm. and so I started looking at some stuff. I had a lot of people approaching me because they felt affiliate marketers are told to look out for other people who have certain qualities, mm-hmm. even if they're not already entrepreneurs but you can mold them into the type of people that Wait, you want them affiliate, like network marketing network marketing no, okay it's word. affiliate marketing yeah, but it's yeah. network marketing yeah, network marketing at the time Multi- but in literally sense marketing. exactly multi-level marketing correct yeah, yeah. um and to be more specific i started off with a company called monavi which yeah. is a drink a drink bottle company so it looks like a wine bottle but it's this it's made out of acai fruit, which is a super fruit that you find in the Amazon, Brazil. And um, long story short, this stuff was supposed to be like a crazy, crazy juice for you. It was like 33 bucks a oh, bottle. Yeah, I remember. You I, had some? I think I, I, I can't remember where I got some. I never, I don't think I, 
Wait, did I sign up for Monty B? Oh, you shit. might have, yo. I, I you might have. Might have gotten hooked in. Yeah. I, I did, you know, join a couple network marketing companies briefly. And yeah, yeah. Just, I'm not I'm not a pushy salesperson at all, so it's kind of hard for me. So your boy was hungry. I mean, I was going in there, and I was setting up meetings on a daily with, like, five or six other kids slash teenagers that I, I would just gather up. Yeah. And then at one point, it evolved to, like, bigger meetings but I realized it was quite unsustainable because I would I would be really good at getting everybody really excited and ready to do it. One or two days would go by, and then everybody would go back to their, like, uh, regular stationary place. Like, ah, I don't really know. And so I realized I was like, this is bullshit. Like, I know I can do the job, but everybody I keep bringing in is not really there. So then I was like, all right, we need to do something more sustainable in regards of, you know, supply and demand. I had realized that there's a bunch of events that my friends were trying to go to in high school in Seattle, dance parties. Um, And for anybody who knows this, long story short, if you're an underage kid, you cannot go to clubs. If there's any professional event that's anything remotely to a club, kids are about to be there. Um, And so I realized we didn't have that on the east side. And I decided to start a company where me and another business partner put the events together, we marketed them, and we had DJs, security, the whole nine yards, and we threw events all around the east side, including Seattle, mm. um, ranging from 500 to, like, 1,500 kids per event. And the crazy part about that, to kind of wrap things up with the whole parents thinking that that was me basically selling myself, you know, my soul, my soul to the devil, was the fact that, in this case, I was providing a nightlife entertainment environment for kids to sin, I guess, mm, was, was mm. their word. And, and your parents, you know, you were born in Kenya because your parents were missionaries. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so so religious. when you were telling me before when they, you know, you kind of got a pushback and you had to stop selling your, your stuff, I was like, I had got, I got the same pushback because mm. my parents had found out through another set of parents who had dropped off their kids at my event. Mm-hmm. And so they basically were like, oh, yeah, you know, nice, nice to see your son. We dropped him off their event. And they're like, huh? And then there was that. There was another couple other c- circumstances. And then they pulled me aside. And I explained them what's going on. They basically told them that, that I was, I was doing these sinful things. Mm. Um, and said if I didn't stop, I was not going to get my uh, sports paid for and basic entertainment. Mm. And at the end of, at, at that time, I was playing for a premier soccer team, so oh, we did right. a lot of traveling. So it was right. quite a bit of money. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I told them I was gonna stop, mm-hmm. and then kept going. No. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So for a whole another year, I told them I was I was done. No worry about it. I just kept throwing the events on the back end. Mm. Uh, That's at the, hilarious. At, yeah. at the end of senior year, I decided to tell my dad. That I had kept doing it because the company had gotten so big. We had like hosted like the grand opening for the Swedish hospital opening on the Highlands. Oh, wow. That, like huge ass, like 5,000 person grand opening, wow. uh, multi billion so- dollar infrastructure. Um, so we were doing events up to that level. Obviously, we started with teenage events, high school base, and then moved all the way up to like we were running the events for some of the biggest companies out there. Hey, um, that's dope. And so we did stuff like we got featured on PBS. With like a like a kids channel, oh, um, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with it. PBS, PBS, of course, public yeah, yeah, broadcast, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, and so there's there's a feature of our company, me and the business partner that's, on that channel. Yeah, that's I'm dope. gonna see if I can find it and uh, oh, I'll yeah, put, uh, yeah, I'll yeah, put like dope. a little little video on it. Yeah. But anyways, that was the beginning, and I gotta I gotta say this, I don't want to you know take the mic for too long, but. There was, there's been several times in the last couple of years where I'm on some of these new ventures that I, I can talk about later in the episode. But I've thought about the type of success that I experienced at the pace that I experienced it mm. at, at 16. Mm. And it was all very fast. Mm. Meaning the idea came up two months later, first event, already made profit. Right. And so I was thinking about that. I was like, what, what was the difference between my me going at it back then as a goddamn 16 year old and me now as a 29 year old. And I was like, yo, back then I had zero fear on any level. Like even on the dumbest level, like you're clearly not going to land that, that job or you're not going to get this loan or whatever. 
I would still go for it with a hundred percent serious face. Like yeah, it's yeah, not nothing, gonna face nothing me. Nothing to lose. Yeah. Nothing to lose. Yeah, we're in. And so I realized I was like I was having meetings with like brain surgeons at like sixteen, asking them yeah. for like thirty thousand dollars so I can invest into a bigger event that was gonna make a hundred fifty thousand dollars. And so at that age, I was already absolutely relentless. Mm. And so I gotta say, you know. When it comes down to having an idea, I don't care what age you're at. If you go for it, you will be surprised more so than not. Mm. Your story might not play out the way mine did in regards of like in high school, actually like making a little bit. I mean, long story short, the taste that I got from making that much money that quickly in all cash Mm -hmm. as a kid was unreal. Yeah, we're in. because yeah, I, I six months ago I was gonna have to wake up and go to push carts around at Fred Meyer mm-hmm. parking lot, and then now I just made like three thousand dollars in a weekend, yeah, all cash in. stuffed in a shoebox. Yeah, yeah, we're in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. shit changes That's at that point feeling, as, as a kid, and, and I was like, "Whoa, dude!" Like, and then you wake up on a Sunday because you know the events would be on a Saturday, and you'd be like, well, "What do you want to do today?" Whatever the fuck you want Yeah we're in, Yeah I mean that's um, how I feel right now <laughs> You know what I mean Like yeah. whatever the fuck you want And so I You know I have to say The on, the whole entrepreneur vibe Of selling that lifestyle That idea Has gotten a little bit overboard In the last couple of years Especially online mm. Selling that idea That you can just Do whatever Whenever Always be on the beach With a hot chick And you know It all these ridiculous circumstances that, like, sure, you could have that if you really want to work towards it. But if your life doesn't play out exactly that way, that's okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, it's, like, a lot of that stuff. I mean, it's kind of like the, you know, get get rich quick or, like, um, you know, get ripped in seven minutes a day. <laughs> you know, it's, like, seven-minute abs. with. Anything, but definitely with entrepreneurship, it's going to mean a shit ton of work. Like you, as a, a business owner, like you have to work your butt off. Like you really do. Seriously. You really do. Uh, for, and you know, usually for years. And it's like, like, I mean, I owned a cafe and I was like working 17 hour days, like, you know, just to keep the place running, you know, it's like, and I, you know, my business partner, Birdie was just like, she was working so hard. Like she... And she's like a genius, like, you know, it's like, we, uh, it's funny, we set, opened this cafe and we, uh, I think we, you know, had an idea and like, you know, probably should have set it up so that under, other people were running it because like we were more into the business part and like yeah. we ended up doing all the operational stuff too. Yeah, I remember that. Like, but I yeah. remember you doing all the work. Yeah, yeah. The kitchen. It was, yeah, it was, I mean, it's an incredible amount of work and it was dope. Like, you know, it, it ended up like leading to a lot of other other things for me you know that are still paying off so i mean it's like any any work you put in is going to be worth it in some way or another let's talk about that um give us a good example of random experiences that you gathered that you you right now are finding out like whoa full circle uh, well, I mean, like, uh, never thought I'd be really utilizing these skills, and it's really paying off. Uh, well, it's. I mean, I could think of like multiple things that like have really just like you know come to fruition this week. You know, one of them being like I you know just got asked to open a a vegan restaurant in Seattle. You know, and I and we're in like develop products for a food company, and it, it's because of like I've basically invented all these new new foods or new like ways of processing foods and working with a new vegan cookbook um yeah you know just dropped a, just dropped a cookbook you know um and yeah like met of like you know it was able to be on food network you know it's like I'm, i've been obsessed with cooking shows for dope, years yeah. you know like which you won um yeah you know i won a uh, supermarket stakeout um with chef alex gordon shelly and i'm like i you know and I, I know chef alex gordon shelly now it's like i you can send her cooking videos and like she'll like give me feedback and be like you know tell me why it sucks <laughs> but cheers to that but, yeah. cheers to that win it's funny that was um, dope but yeah um so so yeah i mean going it's back like to the question those type of things it's like 
that all those random things like would never would have happened had I not opened a cafe, you know, and like had I not gotten True. like 12 hours a day cooking experience, you know, for a couple of years, mm-hmm. um, you know, cause it's like, I, I learned a lot, but there's really, and being a chef is a great example. There's something about like being in a profession, you know, whether it's hey, you're starting your own business and you're doing entrepreneurship or you're a chef and just being in the kitchen, in the office or whatever, just working for hours a day, you know, day after day, you know, for Skin months deep. or years, you know, it's like there's something, there's a proficiency that goes along with that. It gives you a confidence. It gives you, and it's like, it also, you know, teaches you how to work through things and like you can translate it to other professions or other areas of life and so you know it's like when you're putting in work especially like and you're doing it the right way and starting with a good plan it's gonna teach you things and like give you competencies that you can use you know in every other area of your life or multiple other areas i actually have a good example for this one because when you and i started this podcast you and I already had a couple each already had a couple different businesses that we had already started mm-hmm. prior to. Yeah. Not together, but in our own, in our own times. Yeah. We're in- and we like any business, we came up with our business plan, the idea started to formulate the whole structure and to be extra, extra sure, you know, I pointed out, I said, let's get some, let's get, you know, get a hold of a course that teaches us kind of walking through the, you know, how to make a successful podcast. Yeah. And then little do I know, as we were going through it, I just kept looking at you and I'm like, we did that. Yeah, we've already done We did this. that. Yeah. We did that. We talked about that. We already know this. And before we knew it, it, was, it, was, it became almost kind of boring. And I'm not going to say which course it was, but it was good information. My point was you and I had already gone through so much of the literally building a business from scratch in other industries, it didn't have to be podcast specifically. Mm-hmm. That by the time it came down to just starting this podcast, even though we weren't in the podcast industry, it was pretty well aware as to what we needed to do to build a successful brand mm-hmm. uh, and and get off on the right foot. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, and at least have the structure there in order to get recognized once the the momentum starts to hit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, you know, but that being said, it's like, we also have learned so much from this process that I like, I feel like is going to translate to, you know, every other business that I um, start or manage or whatever from here on out too. Exactly. Uh, Um, I mean, damn, just as a side one for everybody out there who feels like they're stuck working jobs that they don't want and they keep thinking how they should be in the entrepreneur lifestyle. Let me tell you this. I've made a comment to to you several times. You and I met each other through the uh, event management slash brand ambassador industry. Yeah, promotional marketing. Promotional marketing, whereas a whole lot of setting things up. Mm-hmm. Um, not just that, but that's a big part of the job in many, many ways. Mm-hmm. I almost always, I didn't necessarily hated that part of the job, but depending on the job, you know, sometimes a lot of heavy things, yeah. a hot day. Yeah. Sometimes it's very well organized. It depends. Yeah. That being said, I almost never really appreciated me doing those things. I just kind of went through the motions and just continued and just moved on. In the last few months, how many times have I brought it up to you how nice it is that we can get all of our equipment, set it up, tear it down mm-hmm. in a very quick manner, Yeah, no matter what the circumstances are. Yeah. And I know why we are able to do this because I mean we've been doing this for like 10, 15 yeah. years for other companies. Yeah, doing that, you know, but also it's like the fact that we, you know, like know how to edit videos and, you know, it's like you, you make music so like you can make songs and, you know, like we know how to get someone to create a, le- a logo for us. You know, we could make our own logo, but, you know, it's like if you even like spend, you know, five, ten bucks you can get someone who specializes in so delegation uh, why don't we talk about that yeah delegation is a big part and that's something you know i'm like really working on i'm really looking i'm gonna be hiring an assistant in the next few months just because like i have too many tasks to do where it's just like it's not not super creative i can just pay someone to do it just give them a list of things busy work not busy work um 
obvious work things that are just like and some of it it's like re, re, it's gonna require it's like it requires thoughtful work you know it's you can't just like post something like um or you know like write an email and like thoughtlessly it's like you really have to think it out and you know address it specifically to the situation and the person and like you know talking in terms that where are going to be effective for that that person and like you know there's multiple layers to all these interactions but you know if you have someone who like who gets it and who's a thoughtful person and like you you know have, uh, have a good um, connection with and like you really can show them how to do the job like you can multiply your effectiveness just like you know, so many times by however many people you hire, you know, and it, it's just managing people is a very, you know, uh, is a skill and like, it's a very, you know, um, important skill and some that it's like really tough for a lot of people. You yeah. know, it's like one of those personality things. Like, well, I can say this, it's a skill like anything, so you can grow yeah. into it. Yeah. Um, and I can say it's one that you kind of want to grow into. Oh yeah, like you don't don't you don't want to put that aside, even if you don't want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, learning how to manage people, you want to learn how to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the books I recommend, actually everyone read, but one of the books I recommend recommend most often is uh, "How to Win Friends and Influence People" by Dale Carnegie. Um, oh, okay, I thought it was gonna be the the Robert Greene one. Oh no, um, how to influence influence um the laws of influence or something like that yeah i'm gonna have to double check exactly the name of it but uh yeah, robert no. green great no. great author yeah no. um dale carnegie it's basically like an, a manual for like being a better person but um that i mean uh think and grow rich is good too but like uh how to win friends and influences pe influence people that's really like personal interactions i feel like that's one of the best books like just the starting place you know there's you know countless others but if you haven't read that or like are looking to and are looking to improve your people skills like that's a great place to start Dope. um but yeah put the plug in there Where? um anything else you'd like to add on to that last point um yeah, I mean, it's also, it's like, it's really important that you learn how to work with people, but it's also very important that you choose the right people. You know, if you're going to hire someone for your organization, like, don't don't hire someone just because they're your friend. You probably shouldn't hire family. You know, it's, uh, you really got to hire the right person for the job. And um, so someone who has, like, the interest and the availability, you know, because, like, you could try to hire someone who's, like, uh, like, an expert, you know, but they're probably going to be expensive and they're probably going to be super busy, you know, because everyone's going to want their time. So, you know, it's like finding the right people and finding someone who can grow into to a position is, uh, is crucial. So off of that point, I run a company with my mom, my mother. Word. And, uh, in 99% cases, I would say exactly what you said, which is, be very careful about working with family mem family yeah. members. Yeah, yeah. Or but um, I mean, I opened a cafe with my ex girlfriend. I mean, she was my girlfriend at the time, and that I mean, it, it worked out great. You know, it's like it's one of those things that can be a very dicey situation, and it's it's really got to be dependent on the personalities too. You know, because yeah, um, you know, if it's two, especially if it's two people who want to be the leader. Like, that's probably not going to work out, especially no. with your family. You know? No, which is why our partnership works out. Yeah, and I see that. So, I mean, my mother and I w do exactly what the other one is not doing. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's that yin and the yang. Yeah. We're well aware of this. We know exactly what we each bring to the table. Yeah. We've assessed the skills and what we're each supposed to focus on, and it's very, it's clean cut. Mm. Um. What I would say is this, we definitely, for anybody out there who is starting a business or has been working a business with their family members, I would say you're going to have to treat that situation with extra care. I'm not saying you don't treat your other business relationships with care. This one is going to have to, you're going to have to be extra aware because you will find the circumstances like any situation where you will not agree on something 
or you won't want to do things the same way as each other, which is, I guess, is the same thing as not agreeing. But you need to weigh it out. Is it worth it for you to throw it down and start something or keep the relationship intact mm. in a healthy way? Mm-hmm. Because in this situation, it's, it's my mom, literally. Oh, yeah. And so it's like, okay, do you want to crack the whip on the company ideology and make us all push ourselves to, you know, whatever? Yeah. Or do you want to have a good relationship with your mom at the end of the day? Yeah. And do you want to have fun? You know, like if I start a company with my mom, I really don't give a shit about anything except for having fun, you know? And like, I'm going to talk, like, tell my mom she's doing great. You know, it's just that's what I'm saying. My mom. As if like it, but that's also the personality dynamic that we have. You know, it's like I feel like she wouldn't wouldn't do well if I was not being encouraging or like you know cracking the whip. Like, but some you know some people like thrive under that. It's a it's a rare person, but like some people, it's like you kind of have to like knock them down a few times to like give them a challenge. Well, cause it, like, and for the record, my mom knows I'm kind of a hard ass. Yeah. When it comes down to yeah, running a you business. Know, yeah, we're in. And so there's been a couple times where I kind of came came hard. Mm-hmm. And she took it quite well, meaning she didn't get bitter about it. She didn't get all nasty. We just got right back to work. Mm-hmm. And there's been times where I've apologized for how I came across. Yeah. And we've kind of had our differences. And so all I'm saying is starting a business with a family member is it going to be different in every sense, way, shape, or form? Just understand that it's not necessarily worth it. You getting bent out of shape because the business might not be going exactly how you thought. Yeah, yeah right. And then, therefore, you're going to fuck up the the, the, friend, the the relationship of the the family member on yeah. top of that. Yeah. You know, and that's, like, that's one thing that, you know, I learned. Uh, I've learned multiple times, but... Um, one thing that I really tried to keep in mind, and I feel like I mostly did a good job, but there was times where I like I could have done a better job, like at the cafe where I was just like, the most important thing is like we're we're a team, you know, and like we're like doing this business because it's something we love and we're like having fun and stuff, you know, and like that's all that really matters. And so instead of because like, but I because mean, I was like. We were a five star cafe. Like we had, you know, excellent ratings on it. Like the food, like I really wanted all the all our food to be perfect, you know. And so I was like, you know, really trying to to keep that up. And it was just like, you know, kind of got strained at times. But the, you know, at the end of the day, I was always like, yo, like great job. Like this is, you know, you're amazing. This is amazing. Like, so when do when do you know, as an entrepreneur, to give something up that you've started? Um, well, I think when you're not enjoying it anymore, actually, as a, uh, it's funny, my business partner, Birdie, like she, uh, she decided like she wasn't really enjoying it anymore and she decided to get a job and she, I mean, she's making a shit ton of money now. We just talked about that shit the other day, mm. but, um, but yeah. Um, and so she was like, Hey, like I, you know, I've decided I would rather, you know, go work for this company. Um, and they, you know, they offered her a ton of movie money to like move to San Francisco. And so she did that. And I was like, yo, I totally support you. I think that's dope. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's like when, you know, um, when you feel like you're either you just, you know, it's time to move on or like, you're not enjoying yourself anymore and you're not like fulfilling, it's not fulfilling you anymore. Then, you know, it's time to either leave Mm -hmm. or shut it down or like find a way to, you know, extract yourself from the situation. Um, yeah, it's something I'm, Keep you know, it moving. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lesson I, I've learned, you know, multiple times and, like, something that I'm really trying to be, uh, um, to be better at where I'm, like, leaving at the appropriate time. And, you know, it's, like, something we, we talk about. Um, yeah, because we also, like, I have multiple projects going on. I've always got asking, people asking me to, like, do some project and, one thing I need to do better is, you know, get better. I say no. You yeah, know, get better say no. no. And so I've like, I've said no to a couple projects in the last like yeah. two weeks. I went and, like turned down a job offer because uh, I got another job offer actually. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you only got 24 hours in a day. Yeah. And the first 20 last minutes, I mean, we basically talked about how no matter if you are a starter, you can get into it. But 
this is more related to if you're the kind of person who's a little bit too active. Yeah. You're a little bit too out there and you know everybody, you know a lot of people, you're constantly involved with different things and people are thinking of you for different things and they're coming up to you and you just can't quite say no. Yeah. Uh, and therefore you stretch yourself thin. Yeah. Spreading yourself too thin you, is definitely a problem. You don't perform as high as you could. And then on top of that, you're not able to focus and really get the few things that you should have been doing like really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I feel like I've been, I've been dealing with that too recently. Yeah, me too. Uh, it is an art. Mm-hmm. Um, it really is an art. So, I mean, and it's a, how it, would you boil that down to making it easier? It's, it's definitely a balance though too, because you know, it's like, there's been times where I had like three or four projects going on that, you know, like we're going on going pretty well. And like, then like things just like I either lost focus or just had too much going on. And so, you know, something started to suffer and I was doing things kind of poorly, you know, and then, but I stuck with it. And then, you know, three, four months later, you know, the projects all kind of worked out, you know, and ended up being successful. And then in the process, because I kind of stretched myself, then I like really grew. Like I, you know, my efficiency just like tripled because it was like, I've got 15 minutes to do an hour of work and it needs to get done. You know, I ended up spending 25, 30 minutes on it, but I got it all done. And then I was like, Hey, don't, don't give me an hour of work, like, you know, with 15 minutes to do it, to do it. You know, I was like, those are like, I mo- learned multiple skills. I got better, you know, efficiency. And then also learned like my, like one to set boundaries, but two, like, like what my capacity is, you know, and that, that's a big, that's one of the biggest things that I'm still learning is like when, you know, I have two projects of my own, you know, a project with like this project, you know, with a business partner and then like, I'm, you know, volunteering as well. And, you know, someone like I tell, you know, like, I've, I've got like six hours that I can dedicate to this. And then, you know, people give me like four or five things. That's like, you know, each one is like three or four hours and you're just like, wait, I can't, I, you know, until you just, I don't like, don't get them done. It's like, I, I really need to be like, Hey, I have time for this. This is what I can get done. All this other stuff. Like someone else is going to have to do it. I, you know, and even delegation, like that's time consuming. Like, yeah. And but I could say this though, when it comes to delegation, you can get really fucking effective about it. Yeah. So for example, I can, I, here's some tips and tricks on how to delegate like a boss. Right. Wake up, do your morning routine, whatever that is. We don't have to get into that. Get all ready to work. When you sit down, when you're writing down your to-do list, you're going to have your actual to-do list, and then you're going to have your to-say list to Mm. that person. Mm. Okay? And it could be as simple as text this person, email this person, do this person, you can even put in parentheses what it's going to be about. There's a special point that you need to focus on. Either way, you lay it all out. And it probably is going to be right to start off, you delegate to like three to five different people. Okay. Mm. You knock it all out. I mean, honestly, you should be able to knock that out in like five minutes. Mm. If you really think about it. Yeah, well, now it de- depend. I mean, it depends it, on the assignment, depends on the person. Yes. Cause okay. like, let's I, just say that's the theory. You know, I I basically did that the other day. I was like, oh, okay. yeah, you know, please do this. And then the person comes back to me. Oh, yeah, can you walk me through how you do this? And I'm like. Okay, sorry. Five minutes was me on the best day. Yeah. Reroute re- re- it for a second. When you get really good at creating a quick document where you walk the person through. Mm-hmm. So, for example, if you're hiring somebody, mm-hmm. if you're on Fiverr, if you're on Upwork, whatever it is. Don't go and type in a certain message to each person you're trying to hire. You're going to write that main template message. Mm-hmm. And that template message is going to get copied and pasted to all the different components of the people who are going to get looked into the job. Yeah. yeah we're in. So these are all like obvious tricks that you can do I mean, to, cut, to cut time. Yeah. Sometimes not obvious. Yeah. 
I guess not yeah. obvious to everybody because yeah. common sense is not common. I mean, even Fiverr. Why don't you go into Fiverr? Because some people, like, they're like, what are you talking about? Okay, so brilliant, brilliant stuff. So for small business owners, for just business owners in general, really, um, f- websites like Fiverr are, for those who don't know, they're third-party websites who tie uh, employers to employees, uh, essentially people who have projects and people who are able to do that that work. And so they're the employees or the contractors have their prices and uh, you can obviously still negotiate in between with messaging and that kind of stuff. But um, the website is that that mediator where they kind of just are just there to make sure everybody gets what they're supposed to get. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets screwed over. And there's some sort of like rating system kind of like every app nowadays yeah so it's a little contractor you know hiring service basically yeah. and you give people projects exactly you know, and so like upwork is another one right upwork's another one i would say fiverr i've gotten a lot of um more creative contractors and in upwork yeah. i've gotten more technical contractors no oh, word yeah yeah and they, um i think like task rabbit is another one but there's a bunch like, I mean, yeah there's a bunch stuff, so they each kind of have their strengths mm. Now, what I would say is this. You can waste a lot of time and money if you don't know how to use these websites correctly. Mm -hmm. So using things like you you have your template message that you're going to send to all the people who are going to pass the first qualification of like you looked at their profile they had great reviews they had a good price they they the profile didn't have you know a bunch of typos Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff and then boom you put them into the list of people who are going to receive that message all right now you got 10 people you send them all the message add their name make it more custom that kind of stuff out of those 10 people let's just say six or eight of them are going to reply back okay Especially because of the pandemic. People are definitely a lot more hungry for work. Um, or when the worst comes to worst, let's say 50% of them reply back. Um, at that point, you continue to talk to them, continue to find out who's going to get the best deal for the best uh, quality of work, and then you funnel it down to one or two. Depending on the type of work that you're looking for, you can even have them send you some sort of example. Mm. And then you really whittle it down to the number, uh, the last person, however many you're you're hiring. But that can be done in a very efficient way, meaning I can talk to about 20 different uh, employees and I can whittle down to one or two in about two or three days with that process. Doesn't take too long. For, you know, for what kind of project, for example? Well, for example, right now, um, I have a new song coming out in mid-April called Merlot. And uh, I'll put the cover on the yeah, screen. Our album cover is hella dope, yo. So that album cover, the artist that I've been working with now for six projects now that we've worked together, I think almost six projects, mm-hmm. and I found him on Fiverr. Mm-hmm. That process I just told you is what I did to get to him. Mm. Word. And so for the record, I had already hired several other graphic designers before him for the last several years Mm -hmm. but because i kept going back because i knew i needed up my game here's another thing just because you hired a person now that does not mean you stop looking Mm -hmm. i gotta be very clear about that because in this situation about the graphic designer he was not the first or the second or third or the fourth Mm -hmm. He was like way down the line as far as like a two, three years later. And so you seeing the, the artwork is amazing. The chemistry that him and I have is on point. Right. He knows exactly what, I, what I'm looking to do, yeah. the vision. He works at a great uh, a speed. I yeah. work at a really fast speed, so that matters to me. And that, I mean, that's super valuable too, like creating relationships with, you know, other professionals and like people around who the like, world. Yeah, you know, and that, you know, and with with the internet, yeah, you can literally hire people around the world who will just uh, do awesome work for you, you know, and um, it doesn't matter where they are really because they, they're doing it online. Um, but yeah, once you find those people, it's like my dad was telling me this story about, um and he's a photographer and he he used to fly to china all the time and uh, he was telling me the story about this uh camera repair shop like this this you know this one guy that he randomly found in china 
he like went to he uh was shooting like photos in the rain and he he was like he had like the perfect shot or whatever and just like didn't want to stop shooting so he kept shooting and then like the rain ruined his camera so he like went to this in i guess in shanghai they have like buildings full where it's like you'd have a mall and you know and here we'd have all different types of shops in china it's just all type it's like be all camera repair places or like all jewelry shops or you know like like you know a building full of all these shops so it goes to all these people, um, repair shops, and, like, ask them how much they're going to um, charge them. You know, the first guy's, like, 200 bucks. You know, second guy's, like, 100 bucks. Third guy's, like, 50 bucks or, like, for, like, 75. And then he goes to this guy. He's, like, yeah, I'll do it for, like, 12, 12 bucks or 8 bucks or something like that. Um, and then my dad's, like, all right, you know. So he gives him his camera and, like, sits there and, like, watches the guy do it. The guy takes his camera all the way apart, you know, um, literally has like you know i don't pray over 100 pieces of this like very like advanced like a very expensive camera uh takes everything out you know fo- like grabs one piece looks at it like hands it to his assistant and, you know the guy comes back gives him a little piece he like puts it in the camera puts everything back together gives it to my dad and it's fixed and then you know from that moment my dad i guess and my dad has only gone to him to get all his cameras repaired. He, like, he'd even, like, buy cameras here at Goodwill that were broken and, like, bring them over to him. Nice. You know, because the guy's an expert, you know. And it's, like, because, like, he, you know, found that, like, found that expert, it's, like, it's saving, it's probably saved him thousands of dollars over the years, you know. And, like, and so it's worth it to keep shopping around and, like, to find someone who really knows what they're doing because mm-hmm. that – that can, you know, take you not this to the, to the next level, but like, like it can make the difference between like you having blockbuster success and like being going unnoticed. Um, Cheers, Merlot yeah. coming out mid April. Yeah, we're in. So um, drinking on summer low. I mean, we out here, you know. It's like. Um, I have big expectations for this podcast. Yeah. Um, in regards to just business in general, I feel I got to be clear: it's not for everybody. Yeah. Uh, it's not as uh, luxurious and as. I mean, I think everyone should try it. It's like it's like serving, you know, at a restaurant. You know, it's like even if you do it for two weeks, it's like if everybody does it, I really feel like. Sure, I mean, you will gain experience yeah, on some level. Like, you'll you'll you, learn something for you'll sure. You'll learn something, and you'll have more respect and, like, more patience for people. And, like... I guess what I'm saying is, is don't beat yourself up if... If you tried it, it and it's, failed. If you tried it and it's not your yeah, thing. Yeah, we're... Um, not... If everybody was a business owner, who the hell would work in the businesses? Yeah, but, I mean, with just the the nature of the world today it's like you almost kind of have to have some sort of high side to hustle now and i guess um, if you feel like uh if you're getting contractor I and mean, you could you're 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 your own boss yeah. you know like but, you're always repping your own brand no matter what yeah and you know it's just like the nature of the world is moving towards people creating either multiple in- income streams or like you know whether it's growing your own food or you know finding some way to support yourself that's like not related to and like having a job or like you like i feel like a lot of people are looking for in alternative income streams or alternative ways to support themselves so how do you think 2021 is going to play out in regards to the regular employment situation let's just say united states and the wave of entrepreneurship um i mean i think that it's gonna kind of go both ways where there's going to be way more entrepreneurs and then there's going to be people who kind of like have get left behind because they don't build skills um that allow them to be entrepreneurs i agree i was saying that about I, shit i was saying that two years ago right and for the record I'm not saying that in regards because of COVID. 
Yeah. I'm saying in regards of automation. Yeah, yeah. I I think we, uh, we've we probably had that conversation yeah. before. But, yeah, automation I see, too. You know, and COVID is really just... Uh, I see on the cake, um, really. Well, it's accelerated that. You know, yeah. it's like it's you know, people aren't going to go back to their offices anymore. And it's like, you know, it's something we were talking about last night. It's like, you know, now that so many people work remotely it would be it would make a lot of sense for people to do what we're doing and like you know rent a super dope house yeah. like somewhere with really nice weather you know you got a pool or a jacuzzi or something you know and you can like basically spend as much money as you would like we could totally spend like this much on a house in, Back seattle, in seattle you yeah. know like actually we were we basically would we have were. we, we were. looked at a place for 2500 and that like, just rent like not not with bills, not with, you know, utilities, yeah. not with garbage. Definitely and, not a pool. You know, de- and yeah, diff- didn't have a pool. Like, you know, it's like definitely not, you know, 80 degrees, you know, 90 degrees in Seattle right now. So two living rooms. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's I feel like a lot of more people are going to be doing this, especially if you don't have kids, you know, and you're making like, you know, 80 K plus a year. You know, it's like, why would you stay home or stay in a big city when you can like go somewhere, rent a super dope house and stay there for three months, six months, or, you know, one month and then go, go somewhere else or, you know, really whatever you want to do. And so I think off of that, um, we'll close it off here with the fact that we have a couple of very exciting projects coming out in regards to helping out business owners and small business owners mm. to be more equipped for success. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like we really would just want to map out and like, you know, kind of share our successes with, you know, finding, you know, double locations or finding little tips and tricks and things that allow us to take our business to the next level without um, spending a lot of money or um, t- spending hours or like, you know, trying to do all these courses or get certifications or stuff. It's like, you know, you can do anything and all the information, you know, for the most part is either free or very, very inexpensive. It's like, you should, you don't need to spend $10,000 on a course to figure out how to definitely need all that. Yeah. yeah, You know, I mean, live the life you want to live. You might pay a little bit for the structure of how it's taught. Yeah. But the information itself, if you're smart enough to piece things together, it's all out there for you. Yeah. You know, and it's like it's one of those things is like if you can like save a, a lot of time by getting someone who's like put together something in a, a very like clear easy to follow like mm-hmm. format or package or whatever but like at the same time it's like once you, again if you're smart enough to yeah. put it all together yourself like yeah. if you can go through the the, the, the real trouble of like yeah no, and I, video after video. I think know. it'd be dope to do put together like a, a retreat or a collaborative or something too. So I mean, that's something we'll have to talk about. You know, if anyone out there, if you want, if you'd want to do like a, like collaborate where you know we, we rent a super dope house or like a mansion and it's like other creative people. It's like that's something we we think about. We have talked about. So you will um, get vetted though. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's like one of, it'd be one of those collaboratives where it's like people with different skills that are all complementary, so we can all kind of help our other. It's actually, you know, goes to an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial concept from think and grow rich called the mastermind group, where it's like you get a group of like-minded people with like complementary skills together and like all promote either a, a specific cause or like all promote each other. So, um, yeah, it's just like a group, like a reference group. So. Dope. Appropriate culture, mastermind group coming soon. Coming soon, guys. So there you go. Episode 12, entrepreneurship. Tells what you thought about it. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Good stuff, Doc. All right, guys. Take it easy. Peace. Thanks for watching this episode from Appropriate Culture. If you want to watch other episodes, make sure to make your way to appropriateculture.com. You can also hang out with us in other social media platforms. They're all in the link in the description. And aside from that, if you want to listen to the podcast on other platforms like Audible, um, Spotify, any of those, you can also find us there as well. Link in the description. Take it easy, guys. Have a good day.